Right, we have gone live. This is fantastic. So it's my pleasure to welcome the fairy whisperer to the show, Claire Casely. She's an author, Hello. podcaster, fairy whisperer, artist, and in intuitive reader. Claire worked in the corporate world until about 2012 when she knew she had to follow her true calling as a creative and as an artist in its various forms. On the show today, you'll discover how connecting with fairies can serve you, mm -hmm. how to open up to these type of encounters, what the difference is between fairy and elemental or nature spirits. Is, is there even a difference? Are these types of spirits mischievous in a fun way? How can you recognise when fairies are around you? And much more. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Claire Casely. Claire, welcome Hello. to the show. Hi, Danny. Thank you for having me on. It's really lovely to be here. And looking forward to sharing all about fairies, which is my passion. Yeah, great. Yeah. I'll share this into one of one of my groups as well, which I advertise in. Um, oh, we've got people jumping on already. So sharing to a group, empower you energy healing. We are live. Do join us. And then we'll get going. So Claire, I'd love for you to start off by sharing a little bit about your journey. How on earth did you get into the the, fel the fairy realm and, you know, mm. what brought you to this point? So it's been, it's been a lifelong journey and uh, which started in childhood having, feeling a connection with nature, being naturally sensitive. I'm a very empathic person. Yeah. Um, connecting with nature, feeling like being in nature was the most natural thing for me, that the rest of the world, school, etc., didn't really make sense. And um, always felt there was some unknown force around me when I was playing in nature. I couldn't, you know, I, couldn't, I didn't see fairies as a child like some children do. I just felt, I tend to feel things. Um, visualize things, see things in dreams, meditation, um, and yeah, feel, sense presences, and hear things as well. But yeah, so it started in childhood. And then as I went through school, that kind of shut that part of me down, as a lot of people do going through school and in, in that sort of system. And I came out focused on art because I'm a, mainly an artist and I do my podcast as part of my love of storytelling and sharing about fairies and helping people and making the the invisible visible for people um, and then I went to university in Swansea and spent a lot of time on the Gower I was really really realized that I missed Devon, where I come from, where I grew up, and I miss Dartmoor. And I started to hear from people around me that there were stories of fairies on the Gower. Um, and I decided to focus my art on how I felt this great connection with the landscape. Um, then after a night out, <laughs> One night when I was at university, I went to bed and I woke up in the night to have a, a drink of water. Or, um, and I looked across, I had a rubber plant by my, by my bed, beside my bed. And in the plant, I could see a little figure looking back at me. Um, and I would say I'd describe it as what people would describe as a typical elf so it's like a little shadowy figure and this only lasted i mean this is you know only 30 odd years ago but it as far as i remember it's just a very quick few seconds even split second sighting um and i didn't really realize at the time that that had a, how much of an impact that it had on me but when i left university and went home and had a year at home um, at my mother's house. All of these drawings of fairies were pouring out of me. 
and they weren't your typical fairies people you know the sort of disneyfied idea of fairies is like these little tinkerbells with wings well there are those types of fairies but fairies are you know very like us are very diverse in how they appear so these were things that i hadn't seen in books that were coming from somewhere i felt that like i'd been initiated in some way in this sighting but i didn't realize i can look back and see that now but i didn't realize that at the time um so then i kept getting pulled away from fairies I thought, right, I want to go and work in London. I want to go to the bright lights. I was only in my 20s. So I went to follow a career in film and television, um, which didn't work out, thankfully, I think, because I don't think I'm suited to that, <laughs> that world at all. Um, and then I went, travelled in Australia, felt this enormous connection with the landscape there and worked with the Aboriginal people whilst I was over there. And then when I came back to Devon, I started to create fairy artwork again. Um, so that's kind of <laughs> where it all started, you know, from childhood. And this it's been a gradual journey. Um, in 2016, I'd... In, in 2012, like you said, I left the corporate world because I was suffering from burnout. I'd been trying to fit myself like a round peg in a square hole into a career, into careers that weren't suitable for me. And I'd always come back to my creativity. And I was recovering from burnout and um, reconnecting with my art, looking into healing. And I did a little course online, which was called Fairyology. It was all about learning all about fairies. And I was really attracted to this. And at the end of the course, I created a journal, um, went up to Dartmoor with this journal, because with the intention that I was going to follow the fairy path now. And I just asked to be led to wherever... I needed to be and um, I was guided to a very special spot on the edge of some woods that are are known to be haunted by fairies um, and I asked permission to go into these woods and I felt that the answer was no and um, so I realized that I'd had this message that I needed to go and clear trash or rubbish in my local woods. And I'd ignored that. But I always carried with me um, a rubbish bag, which I had in my, my rucksack with me. So I looked around and then behind this standing stone, I could see this trash. Um, so I cleared that up and I asked again, can I come into the wood? And the answer was yes. So I said, thank you. I went into the wood, spent some time there connecting, um, drawing, journaling. I'd taken a photo before I went into the woods of the stone where I'd received this message about clearing trash up. Went home, posted my photos in the fairy group that I belong to. And somebody in the group said, oh, there's a little figure in the tree above the stone. And I looked and there was this little, to me, it looked like a little bent over person in the tree. I would say maybe about 12 inches high, something like that. Now, I know um, from my own experience of receiving photos of you know, what people think of fairies and, you know, talking to paranormal friends that I know there's such a thing as pareidolia. And that is something that really interests me. But this looks so much like a little person. And I just felt in my heart, and this is what I go with, I'm very heart-led, that this was, you know, a fairy of some kind. And in this, this part of the world, we call them pixies. I actually created some artwork of him. Shall I 
show you? Yes, please do. Um, excuse me a minute. I'll just have a look through. Yeah, some of your encounters were like, were like my early encounters with waking up through the night to visions or to spirit yeah. people, so I, I can identify with that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it so, can be a bit unnerving at first, but it's like, um, but after a while, I got used to it. You miss it when it stops. Yeah, it, it's. So that was the first image I did of him. Wow. Mm, uh, creative, artistic, to... talented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long did that take you? That must have taken a long time. That took, yeah, a few hours. Is that all? Mm. Wow. But then I did another version of him, which took me a bit longer. My drawing uh, skills are about matchstick men and women. That's that's about my um <laughs> my look. <laughs> so, this is something I've been doing all my life. Mm -hmm. So oh yeah, it's taken. <laughs> Wow. So that was my so this is what I could see. This is my interpretation mm. of him. Yeah. And a he felt he was a he. And then I just developed a connection with this being. And I took my son, um, who was then only about eight years old, eight or nine. Um, and my daughter, we went back to this place and um it was lovely to share this story with them. And, you know, at that age, they were really enthralled and they could see things as well. They were very good at seeing things or picking up on things, um, you know, to do with fairies. Um, and then in about 2016, later in 2016, um, I went, a couple of other things happened. So it's a very significant year after I'd done this course and had this first encounter, my mum and I went to a garden on Dartmoor and we were wandering around this garden and just laughing and joking because she'd taken a photo of me, which is a bit unflattering. So we we're just having a laugh together. And we were walking along the path back towards the cafe to go and have a cup of tea. And we walked past this big log mm. and from, it was on my left side. I don't know whether that's significant, but at the corner of, this is corner of the eye phenomena, at the corner of my eye, I saw a little person sat on the end of this log. It's a little male, I felt some male um, being. And I said, oh, look, there's a, there's a pixie. And my mum instantly said, oh, yes, a pixie. So it was just an instantaneous split-second response. And we just walked on and said, well, you know, I saw it looked like something was sat on the end of the log. We both, it was a really special experience that we both had together. And then we also went away a month or so later to a fairy festival in North Devon. I stayed in an old cottage. Mm -hmm. And whilst I was there, I felt a connection with um, what I'd say was like a guardian of the garden. And as it, in the morning that I had this connection, when I was going downstairs to breakfast, a little gold orbs flew by me on the stairs. So to me, that was like an affirmation to trust that what I'd seen was, you know, to trust what I was experiencing. Um, then roll on six months. And sadly, my mum was diagnosed with cancer in early 2017. Um, and now I can look at those experiences and think, was she, because my mum, she doesn't, she has totally different beliefs to me. I'm very open-minded about the paranormal, um, having these kinds of encounters, but my mum isn't. So I'm wondering whether 
she because she was in this kind of in between place and you know the fairies are supposed to be exist in these in between places that she was in this liminal sort of place that we that's why we were connecting in that way at that mm. time um yeah and every time i've come away from the path and thought oh you know as we do question myself you know why am i doing this i've always been pulled back to it in some way there's been somebody's given me a book on fairies or a fairy figurine or a um or i've received a message like a text message from someone at a it's, you know, synchronicity at a time when I've been thinking, oh, I don't know if I can continue with this path and I receive a message to encourage me from a friend. It's so that's why I've kept going and I decided, well, this is it. This is what I need to do. Um, and I, I feel that it's because I need that joy in my life. And I need to pass that joy on because for me, fairy is all about playfulness and joy. And if I can do that through through my work, then to me, oh, that's it's just very satisfying. It's job done for me. Yeah. Yeah. Is, mm. is your mum still here? Out of interest. She is. Yeah. Good. She's. Good. Um, what are we now? So. Yeah, seven years into her into her diagnosis, and Good um, up, she's still here. Yeah. yeah, so she's, she's free. Yeah, carry on. Um, no. Mm. So, um, you mentioned earlier about helping people to see the unseen. So, mm. what? Um, I think I think you said you you have workshops and, and things like that. So. What, yeah. what are your key tips? What are your ninja moves on, on how best to, to start being the unseen? Um, well, one of the key things with, especially with working with fairies, is to keep an open heart. Yeah. And I found that mindfulness in nature it's something that i learned um i trained as a meditation teacher as well but i a couple of years ago i did a a course in natural mindfulness and um some people know it as forest bathing and it's a way of just going i say to people go into nature regularly as much as you can connect with nature even if it's sitting in the local park um, or if you're lucky enough to have a garden, spend the time in your garden. But when you can get out into wood, local woodlands or parkland, wherever, and really, I would say, turn off your phones, turn off anything, any distractions, um, and focus on your surroundings and notice what's around you. So notice all with all your senses, the sounds, the tastes, the touches, um, you know, what the ground feels like under your feet. If it's been raining, looking at the raindrops on the leaves, on the petals, listening, standing, um, if you're with a friend, you know, practice some moments of silence as well, because in this day and age, we're so used to filling our space with sounds and distractions. It's just really listening. And that's when you notice the bird songs and the, the rustling of leaves. Um, I work with the wind. A lot so you can you can ask nature messages i i speak to the wind um you can ask the wind questions and it will answer you and you'll find your way own way of doing that there's no sort of rule book about this it's finding your own way with it um birds 
something I used to do when I was a child, a lot of people do, was to talk to the birds. You know, they'd, there'd be a blackbird sat on the washing line or something, you know, and I'd, I'd talk to it. These are all sort of intuitive things that we do that can bring us some peace and answer our questions that, you know, they're tools that we have naturally that we tend to have lost in this part of the world anyway, but a lot of people are retaining back now. That will help you to then, the more you do that, that will then build up this reciprocity with places, especially if you keep going back to a place, you'll, you'll create this connection with the place. And then that's when those experiences will start to come into your day-to-day -day life, your dream time, your um, you know, imaginative time. And uh, that's when the mag it allows the magic to come in. And you know, I don't mean sort of Harry Potter type magic. I mean this sense of enchantment that we have as children that tends to ebb away as we as we get older. Mm. Yeah, and what I like to, to bring in as well is to leave your expectations at the door. Don't go to a park and think, right, I want to see this and I want to see it this way yeah. and that way because um, that will block. So just remain open-minded. You know, be okay with the yeah. fact that nothing might happen. Some people might be a little bit fearful. So that's why mm. they mentioned it earlier. They tend to come in your peripheral vision. So it's like, oh, it's mm. something. And it sort of vanishes as you look. Um, yeah. So they'll sort of come from your peripheral and, and they may eventually appear to you, you know, in full, full blown technicolor out in front of you when you are ready for it. Um, but that may take a little bit of time. And again, don't expect it. So, no, and I, I would say any experience is just as valid, you know, if you just hear something That's and right. you feel it's a message, or if you um sense something with your body then that's just as valid as seeing you know with your eyes um i mean i, I would say i've had a handful of experiences like that where in the time i saw the i call a pixie with my mum at the corner of my eye um Yeah, I should have written that, them all down, but <laughs> a lot of the time, a lot of the time, it's either brief visions when um, I've had them when I'm really relaxed, drifting off to sleep. Um, I, that's when I've, I remember saying, oh, I've never seen winged fairies. And then a few days later, just as I was drifting off to sleep, I had this very clear, I mean, almost as in front of my face, but I have my eyes closed, vision of these little white fig winged figures, no features or anything. And it was almost like, yeah, we're here as well. <laughs> but most of the most of the beings I've connected with are very earthy, like the gnomes, the pixies. Um I tend to draw all sorts of different fairies in my artwork. They, they just come through. Yeah. I've had a lot of um, auditory experiences as well, which um, but another thing I'd say as well, if you, if you like writing or drawing, then to keep a journal of your experiences, so since 2016, I've kept journals and uh, wow. my dad, and he was leaving one of his jobs, um, the office was having a clear out and he gave me a load of A4 hardback books that they were just going to put in the skip. So I've decor I decorated them and I've written about, I filled about seven of these since 2016 with everything that I consider to be like, not only my sort of spiritual development, I suppose, but also any experiences that I've had. 
and it's a really good record now of I can look back and think, oh yeah, that's when that happened because otherwise it all gets mixed together. Um, yeah. So shall I share one of them with the, the auditory? Please do, yes, auditory absolutely. Ones. Yeah, so one of the phenomena I've had is knocking. So my sister bought me a fairy door back in, it would have been about 2018. What's a fairy door, sorry? Like... It's like a little, I've got it over there actually, I can show you it, but it's a model of a doorway that is supposed to be a doorway for the fairies. Oh, right, okay. And they were really, well, they're still popular, but at, at one stage around that time, they were just really popular and everybody was buying these fairy doors to put in their gardens and their houses. But what they are, they're portals. <laughs> so you've got to be careful about what you invite in um, and really sort of use a bit of caution around them, I would say. Do you, yeah. Um, so I had this fairy door. Shall I, shall I just get it? It's over. Yeah, please do. Please do. Over on the shelf. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please give a subscribe if you like this sort of content. There's, there's lots more where these come from. And uh, I'm going to go to the comments section as well because we've got some wonderful comments in the section. And as I've seen, I have lots of fairy doors. Ooh. And Juliet's yeah. saying I can totally relate to all of this, Claire. I would actually much prefer to walk in the woods on my own as the connection oh. for me is so much stronger in that silence. I love all this. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. And seen you emanate such a beautiful energy. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Kathy saying, I think many of us have lost touch with our intuition. We put our trust in leaders, experts and politicians to act and decide on our behalf. We stopped thinking for ourselves. Recently, people have realised that trusting our own instincts and learning from nature is all we do. We've got mm. Craig in the chat saying, lovely to see you both. Oh, Thank you for being here. Craig. Oh, I see you. Yes, we're back over to you. Yeah. So this is this is the door that my sister gave me. Cool. It says welcome on it. Um, yeah, they come in all shapes and forms, but that's what it, it's intended to have in your home. And I had it by my bed, in my bedroom. Yeah. And one night I woke up to the sound of, I was woken by the sound of a creaking door. And I thought that somebody was down in the kitchen, like perhaps one of my children, opening the, um, opening and closing the kitchen doors. Came down, it was, there's no one in the kitchen, all the doors were closed. And I thought, well, it sounded like it was closer to me, you know, because it's quite audible. Yeah. I didn't connect it with this door. And then shortly after that, I had some fairy door knocking. So, um, there we go. So where is it? Yeah, so I had an experience of right near, near my head, like somebody was knocking three times next to me, trying, and I thought, oh. <laughs> um, and then it happened again a few days later. And this was all around Halloween that year, Sawain. So like about three days either side of Sawain, I had this door knocking going on. And then a doorbell. I heard a doorbell as well. Um, and the other th intermittent thing I've had is my letterbox, which I've heard in reality when I've been awake. My, let my letterbox will tap three times. And then I realised this must be, I've had this fairy door in my bedroom for the last couple of months and this activity has started since I've had it in my room. So then I, I set up some rules and I said to the fairies, you can come in when I say you can come in, but please don't disturb me when I'm sleeping. <laughs> and uh, I put some crystals on the steps 
as well. So it's good to set boundaries yeah. with any sort of beings, isn't it? And it is. That's, only, a, that's an important point, yeah. Yeah, only the benevolent, I said only the benevolent fairies are welcome. But I, I think I only attract, I've attracted benevolent spirits or fairies so far. But it's always, I wouldn't, you know, be fearful about it, but just be wise and set some boundaries and some protection before working with anything that's otherworldly. Mm. Yeah, indeed, Teresa says it's weird. Just five minutes before this began, she heard a few taps on her door, and when she got ah! to the door, no one to be seen. <laughs> that's happened before when I've been talking about this. That's another coincidence, actually, Teresa, that's happened. I was on um, a friend's podcast a few months ago talking about this, and she heard some bumps on her ceiling above her. And uh, and then another thing I did was I was telling an ex-boyfriend about it about three or four years ago. I said, oh, you know, this knocking on my door, he didn't believe me, um, which is fair enough. I'm not out to convince anyone um, but I was on the phone to him one day and he said oh excuse me there's um, someone knocking on the door it must be Amazon with my parcel he went oh, there's no one there I said well that's the fairies <laughs> yeah yeah it's quite make, make the presence known is, is mm. I think you alluded to earlier that can be a little bit mischievous but in in fun ways rather than rather than anything else yeah yeah i mean in folklore of course you know the pixies and fairies have had a bad rap with and there are darker energies you know i know that i'm not you know there are people that have had very difficult experiences with fairy beings you know like goblins and um, there are things called imps, but I've not come across those, so it's not part of my experience, but I respect that other people have had those experiences. Um, I mean, fairies aren't all light, like like us, they are this light and dark, but I think from the messages that I've had from them through working with them, they don't tend to differentiate, they don't judge there's no judgment over good and bad light and dark they just are <clears throat> they just are and how we how we receive them um depends on our belief systems as well i think as well yeah yeah it makes sense mm -hmm. you've, you've written a book haven't you? you said you're an author is that correct Yes, I'm writing a book at the moment about the Dartmoor Pixies right. or the Devon Pixies. Um, I've actually decided that I'm including the whole of the Southwest because there are Pixies in Cornwall. They call them Piskies down there. And there's the Knockers that are a type of Pixie that work in the mines that miners used to um any knocking that they heard, they'd take that as being the pixies in the mines warning them to get out of the mines or telling them that they were near, you know, striking a vein of, of tin. So there's so much folklore in the southwest about the pixies. And over the last, after lockdown, um, I, I, before lockdown, I'd been started researching them. And then I decided, well, I'm just going to go and visit all these places that are associated with them and write about it from a perspective of what do these places feel like? Because I like to experience places, um, to actually go there and experience them for myself so that when I come to write about them, I've had an authentic, you know, connection. It's coming from a heart place rather than a factual kind of place so yeah that's what I'm doing at the moment writing a book about the the pixies and their places so it's a focus it's focusing on their places in the landscape yeah I have, yeah. A, feel, I have a feeling feeling it will do well 
when it's published and out there in the world. And um, yeah, thank you. Maybe demand for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm also must share that I'm doing a fairy and dragon workshop with um, Jane Pearl on the 24th of June. So it's like riding on the solstice energies and that's going to be at Dartington. Um, yeah, I've got various other things coming up and I've just come back from Sussex recently because I, I went to, I'm starting to investigate, not investigate, but explore um, places, other places in the country where people are having fairy experiences. So I've recently come back from Sussex where I spent a couple of days in my guest's garden talking with her about the fairy experiences in her garden and um, doing a bit of dowsing there. And I'm researching the folklore of that area and the history. So that's going to be a series of episodes. And I also had a walk with another guest whilst I was up there. We went up to Chanctonbury Ring, which is supposed to be haunted by fairies and ghosts and ufos and all sorts so that'll be another episode that, uh, that i'm releasing to share what we what we sensed up there um and the connection we made yeah i know you've got yeah. big plans big plans moving forward as well and um I'm yeah she'll sure, sure come to fruition as you keep following in your intuition and your nudges from from the other world um, yeah. Do you have your own cards, your own like oracle fairy cards? Any plans to to make some? I do. Yep. For the, I actually for the last few years I've had some written up, and I've got the imagery ready. It's just putting putting it all together into card form now. Um, finding a printer, and finding the the finance to print them because that's the the costly thing is actually getting them printed. So I might do them in a limited run to start with and test the market. Those will be based on um, the imagery that I create through mi mirroring photos. So when I'm in nature, I might see one of the ways that fairies communicate with me is by showing half a face or half a figure or half a symbol. And I photograph it. And then I mirror it on an app on my phone. And quite often loads more imagery appears in that photo. So I'll see um, more figures, symbols, all these little, little beings appear. Um, it's quite amazing, really. And also gateways. There's amazing gateways where there's beings and all sorts. <laughs> so... I've got loads of, I've got hundreds of these photos, but I've condensed it down to about, I think it's 44, 44 cards and yeah, divided into different suits of cards. Yeah. So, it, yeah. Seems, it seems to me like that would be the next logical step for you because you, you've got everything, all the gifts and um, abilities in place. And you could also, just a thought that you could also do it from an app version, an app you download, and then you can oh. see it much more. And um, the, the, yes. cost you, you could, the cost to you would be a lot cheaper, and you could pass that cost on, the, the, the cheaper cost mm. to the to the, the recipient. Um, That's a good idea, actually. Yeah. I'm very much about, obviously, environment, looking after the environment, and um, not creating any more waste than is necessary <laughs> and AI is the big thing isn't it so if I can find an app that I can do that easily and integrate it all together that would be a brilliant solution yeah and then it'll be really accessible to everyone um, it's like with my podcast I just want to be what I'm doing to be accessible and there to be a kind of more of a normalization 
of what we call the paranormal. Um, this very sort of segregation that's been going on for, for years about, well, that's just your imagination. Um, the paranormal's not real. And for it to come back into, well, it is, you know, the people I talk to, I listen to, I believe, they bravely come forward, they share their stories open heartedly with me. And I really appreciate that. Um, some people choose to be anonymous and that's fine. But the more people like us that can come forward and just speak our truth and say, well, yeah, this is happening to me. This is real. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't drunk. I wasn't, I'm not going mad. Uh, you know, like in the old stories, they always say, oh, this person, they make fun of people, you know for having these experiences this is about now it's time to take that power back and say well yeah there's more to life you know there's more going on around us um and if i can help champion that in some way then you know again that's that's really important to me to be able to do that yeah yeah you meant you meant all that um mm. uh, question that's just occurred to me how how can the fairy realm serve you? Like, what can you get guidance from them? Can you get um, yes various aspects of your life? Yeah, so that's another thing I I do actually. Um, I work with a fairy guide, mm -hmm. and I can help people to connect with their fairy guide. Um, so once you, if you want to connect with the fairy realm and work with them and journey through it, it's good to have some kind of guide, or they're also known as familiars. Right. So um, it, that could be like an actual fairy person, um, usually is, or it could be an animal spirit. Yeah. And it's almost like a teacher and a guide, a guide to keep you safe um, whilst journeying through the fairy realm. And I, I had a guide come through for me very powerfully about in 2019 the year before the pandemic happened and I started to have connection with this guide through meditation and I wrote down all these journeys that she was taking me on when I was going into meditation I decided to it was a time that I felt I wanted to improve my clairvoyant ability. So I was just taking a short online improve your you know, clairvoyance kind of course with somebody that worked with fairies. So I thought, yeah, that sounds really good. And as soon as I started doing that, that's when I started to connect with this guide and go on these journeys into the fairy realm. Then when the pandemic happened, um, I was stuck at home I thought well I'm going to use this time to record these journeys as meditations for people to help other people so I did that and now I've taken that one step further and I provide readings for people um, via my Etsy shop where people can um, I can draw I can channel their fairy guides and provide a message for them and guidance but it's something that anyone can do and again it's all about intention so if you feel a call to work with the fairies they will start to come to you and if you go to them and you know with an open heart and you feel a real passion you know whoever you want whatever you want to work with you know but if it's fairies then they will come to you and they will send you guidance about how to work with them um and i would say i mean i've read lots of books about fairies over the years but you i think your own experience is the most valid uh, and you can listen to people like me or other people that are out there but it's about what you experience and your own journey with them that's um yeah the most important You've got a mm. website, haven't you? What, what's your website address again? It's fairywhisperer.co.uk. So I spell fairy the same way as yeah, as it is at the bottom of the chat there. 
F A E R Y. That's the old, old fashioned way to spell it. And it means the old spelling of fairy means enchantment. Yeah. Yeah, that's your website. I've got scrolling along the bottom now, fairywhisperer.co.uk. Yeah. Oh, thank I've been, you. I've been on your website and there's, there's lots of information. There's lots, work. lots on there um, about what I do, how to get in touch with me, and all the different things I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So have a Facebook page or Facebook group, anything like that? I've got a Facebook group for my podcast. Um, which is Fairy Whispering podcast. I've got a patron community. I must mention them because they're really important to supporting my podcast and creative work. So I've got a small group of, growing group of people that support me on Patreon as the Fairy Whisperer. And they, I'm so thankful for them because they help me to run my all the tech that I need for my podcast and all the stuff that I need to create my marketing images and all that, you know, all the stuff that you have to pay a monthly subscription to. So that's just three pounds a month to join. People can join at whatever level, but yeah, you know, it's price. you've got these on your website as well, haven't you? You've got, you've got these um, aspects on that. Yes. I've got yeah. those on my website. I've um, got all my, show notes my podcasts on there um i've spoken to quite a few people about fairies and their fairy experiences yeah I, anything really <laughs> about fairies <laughs> you want yeah. to know there's also i must mention um if you've had a fairy experience or you want to read about other people's fairy experiences because you're interested, there's a website called thefairiest.com and that's F-A-R-Y-I-S-T.com and that's been created by Dr. Simon Young who he's got loads of information on there about fairies and he did a fairy survey from 2014 to 2017 which was published a couple of years ago and that's on there and it's people's fairy experiences all anonymous worldwide and he's work he's putting together the next one at the moment so if, you, if, you, if you've had a fairy experience or have had or know somebody that has it could be a relative you know grandmother grandfather or someone you know you can report that on the website anonymously there's there's no names or pla no specific places mentioned um and that's a really wonderful source to read about fairy experiences as well um i was reading it i just mentioned i was reading it the other day um researching sussex mm -hmm. and there was somebody that had, had an experience where an acorn had hit them on the head and it was so you know they knew it was something to do with fairies because they'd been talking about fairies in that place and it reminded me of an experience i had a few years ago when i went to look around somebody's art gallery up on dartmoor and there was there wasn't anywhere to park apart from under this oak tree so i parked at my car and got out of the car was walking towards the gallery and this acorn hit me on the back of my head <laughs> so I took that as well they're obviously not happy for me to be parked under this oak tree <laughs> you know it didn't it came up from the ground it didn't you know, and I was I was nowhere near the tree when it hit me I was walking away from the tree <laughs> it's like boy <laughs> yeah hmm. yep I'll get that message Crossed you one way or the other, won't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, Claire, it's been a, a delight chatting with you today. Um, yeah, I'd love to speak with you. Yeah, we'll, I'll be putting this on YouTube as well at mm. some point today. And, okay. Um, well, if there's any questions people want to ask me, then, then get in touch. I'm always happy to talk about fairies and answer questions. Um, and if there's anyone that wants to share, 
an experience with me, I'd love to hear from you as well. I always keep things confidential and, um, you know, unless people want to share publicly with me. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks to all of yours who have joined us live. If you're catching the replay, keep the questions and comments coming. And I'm sure we'll clear circle back to you as well. And um, please like and subscribe on YouTube. All the good stuff. Much love and thanks to you all. Until the next one, bye for now. Thank you. Bye, Danny.